Why look at the glass half empty when you can have the full cup? Freshly brewed drama delivered straight to you so that you can sip comfortably. How many more tea puns can I add into this intro? Because remember, if you're not sipping on the full cup, you're only getting half the story. Hi guys, what is up, what is good, what is Gucci? It is your girl Petty Page back at it again with yet another video for you hers. Oh my God, it has literally been forever since I have done a full cup episode. I'm thinking of bringing these back a little bit more frequently because obviously with my new lifestyle, with being a mum of two and all of that good stuff, I struggle to get to every single piece of drama it is that I actually want to talk about. So in today's episode, we are going to be talking about three different people. We're going to be talking about Khalid Ballinger and some of the really weird sh that she has been saying on social media as well as James Charles and the fact that I have not forgotten like I have not forgotten you as well as Gabby Hanna saying that she's leaving the internet and then promptly returning to give people more concerns. So yes, today's episode of The Full Cup is going to be extremely messy, but I know you like it messy. Why? Because you're filthy, you're dirty, you're disgusting, you love it. Anyway, all of the people discussed will be in the timestamps that are on the screen as well as in the description box down below so that you guys can skip to the person it is that you are truly interested in. So with that being said let's get straight into all of the drama okay so first up let's talk about Colleen Ballinger now Colleen Ballinger kind of finds herself in quite a bit of controversy very frequently and it's always due to old videos old content old messages old people old acquaintances that she's had in the past it seems as if Colleen Ballinger has done a pretty good job of cleaning up her public image at the moment however it seems as if Colleen's past seems to follow her every single place she goes she has been called out for her racially insensitive jokes, queer baiting the LGBTQI plus community, as well as literally sending underwear to a minor. That minor being fellow drama YouTuber Adam McIntyre, who is now of age, but obviously you get my point. He was a minor at the time. However, recently, Colleen Ballinger has come under fire for a live stream that she did where she speaks openly and candidly about IVF and describes women who have IVF as broken. This does not sound good. Take a look. Number one says, if you walk out of the house with two babies, people will ask how they were conceived. That's very weird. They, they're saying that everyone is ridiculously interested in knowing if you had IVF. Like if it oh, was because like it's so common with that. Yeah. yeah. So when you take the babies out, out for a stroll, people gonna are going to be you, like, you broken? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No one's broken if they can't do that. No, but you know, yeah. That, that like As you can imagine, this really pissed off a bunch of people across social media. They were dragging Colleen Ballinger for the past couple of days over this comment in the live stream. Now, if you aren't already aware, Colleen Ballinger is currently pregnant with twins. So congratulations to her on that. But that did not seem to phase people on social media who did a little bit more digging to find another a video where Colleen Ballinger laughed at a distasteful joke about IVF. Take a look. This is my baby. She's made of bleached flour. Bleached? She, yeah, she's fake as f <laughs> because if this baby's gonna be real, it's gonna be fake because it's gonna be made in a petri dish. Oh, that's true because we are not gonna be doing any of that business. Now, granted, Colleen Ballinger did not make this joke. She just simply laughed along with it. However, people feel as if this is quite telling of Colleen Ballinger's character. And I think it probably just touched home for a lot of people who have struggled with fertility or have fertility issues. Because the most common thing that does happen is you do feel like you're broken. I can only speak for myself personally. As you guys know from watching my channel and stuff like that, I've had fertility issues in the past due to me being severely overweight. I stopped ovulating. I was trying for babies and it just wasn't happening and after numerous tests it all just boiled down to the fact that I was super duper fat and I needed to lose some weight for health reasons not because I wasn't fine as fuck because I was 
So now over 100 pounds down, your girl has been able to conceive two children. But not everybody is as lucky as me. Not everybody's fertility issues are as simple to solve. But for me, I just kind of feel like Colleen Ballinger needs to be a little bit more mindful when she speaks about these kinds of issues. I personally don't believe that she has any malice or disdain towards people who have IVF or have fertility struggles. I just think that she doesn't think before she speaks, which seems to be a reoccurring theme. But at this moment in time, like I said, the woman is heavily pregnant. So I'd just much rather people just didn't drag this whole situation a lot longer than it needs to be. Or at least wait until the lady has given birth to cause her more stress because she doesn't need it right now. So as we know with people who have twins, a lot of them don't actually go to term because they physically are incapable of doing so. So we really don't want to bring on these babies a lot sooner than they need to be here. Let them stay in their little womb. They're very cozy, okay? Next up, we are going to be talking about Gabby Hanna. Before we get into all of that drama, I do have to give a massive shout out to my brand, Dramatic Boutique, that is currently having a bark off sale that is buy one, get one free on all of our eyelashes. All of our lashes are foam mink synthetic fiber and are 100% vegan and cruelty free. Currently, we have five stars to choose from. Fionn, she is a lightweight, rounded fan lash for people who want a natural day to night glamour. Morgan, she's long and strong and rounded and fanned for people who want to give that gorgeous day-to-day -day look. Maggie, she is a thick queen who is full and glamorous for people who want a bit of sass in their everyday life. Shannon, she is a showstopper, thick, fanned, lightweight, rounded lash for people who really want to show the F out. And then we have Paigey. She's a wispy girl with a thick band and a gradual fanned appearance that will add the perfect finishing touch to any cat eye look. If you go down to www.dramaticboutique.com, there is no coupon code or discount code needed. You just go straight over to check out with your two eyelashes and you will get buy one, get one free. Besides all of that, we also have our lip glosses as well as the no more nudes palette so if you're interested in purchasing anything please do not hesitate to go over to www.dramaticboutique.com because here we're all about putting the drama in our lashes and not in our lives thank you guys so much for all of your continued support with my brand and let's get straight into the video Okay, so Gabby Hanna posted her video about a week ago where she made a music video to her song, Sorry I'm Late, which caused people quite a lot of concern for her emotional well-being. Because at the beginning of the video, she speaks about being hypermanic, as well as feeling thoughts of unaliving herself with intention. Now, I hate to have to give you guys a trigger warning. However, because we are speaking about unaliving yourself with intention, I do want you guys to be aware of that before we pray. Proceed. However, if you remember in the previous Gabby Hanna video it is that I made, I spoke about Gabby Hanna in the description box of her previous video stating that she would be off social media entirely. And people were making countdowns, spreadsheets, and all sorts across social media, especially Twitter, of when she would be returning because nobody believed that she wasn't returning to social media again. Well, approximately six slash seven days, depending on what side of the hemisphere you're on, Gabby Hanna Hannah has in fact returned to social media and this is what Gabby Hannah had to say to all of us. She said, the police just came for a wellness check and I answered the door stoned, covered in paint and wearing only my underwear and a make sure your friends are okay t-shirt. I can't believe they didn't take me away. Well, many people who aren't a part of the Gabby Hanna fandom didn't quite understand why a wellness check was called at this present moment and that if a wellness check was going to be called then surely it should have been after her last video on social media. But it seems as if people were concerned over a post that Gabby Hanna had made to her Patreon. It was a poem, but the poem was extremely dark. This is what the poem reads. Struggling to find a reason to be alive today. My family would miss me, but I rarely see them anyway. My will would have a greater impact on my lives than I do. My friends would miss me, but not too badly. They have other friends that will fill space just fine. My cats need me, but I'm lying to myself. I can't seem to find the toys to keep them interested, the food to keep them healthy. They'd forget about me by the end of the year, if not sooner. Think of all the songs you have left to write. That's just the way to spend your life. Not a reason to live it. You can reach people and make them feel less alone. 
but I know better than anyone how useless that really is. The poem is far longer than this, however I can't find the full manuscript and I am not paying into Gabby Hanna's Patreon just to read it to you. Sorry, her poetry just simply isn't good enough for me to do that. However, just by the first couple of paragraphs, yeah, it's kind of obvious to see why people would have called a wellness check. And a ridiculously stupid gnome on the internet called Keemstar decided to call it swatting. And I'm just like, since when was a wellness check swatting? You tell everybody that the drama community doesn't care about Gabby Hanna, but when the community comes together to make sure that she's okay, now it's swatting. It's an inconvenience to make sure that somebody, you know, is alive or okay. Honestly, <laughs> that dude. Anyway, a lot of people on social media felt as if this was unaliving yourself with intention baiting. I'm not sure if it was or wasn't. I can't really speak for her emotional well being at present, but I do understand why people called a wellness check 100%. A lot of people are saying this is another cry for attention and that she is desperate to come back to the internet and this is the only way that she can do it. Once again, I can't speak for her emotional well being or why it is that she does the stuff that she does. Honestly, I I stopped trying to figure that out a long, long, long time ago. But with this being said, as I said in my previous video, I don't think anybody really wants Gabby Hanna to do that. I do find it hard to believe that she doesn't at least acknowledge or recognize how triggering this can be for other people. But again, I do believe that she should be open and candid with her feelings, even if she is speaking into the abyss. An echo still makes a sound. Anyway, tell me what it is that you guys think about this whole entire situation in the comment section down below. Do you think that she is facing back her return to social media or do you feel as if she is being genuine in this moment and that she might actually be giving a cry for help tell me what it is that you guys think in the comment section down below now moving on to the next situation which is something that you guys have literally been bombarding my email my twitter my instagram and any other forms of social media goddamn near a carrier pigeon to ask me to speak on this whole entire situation when i said i did not forget about James Charles, I truly did not. So let's get into it. So James Charles has returned back to social media after three and a half months of being away. Three weeks ago, he posted his first video, an open conversation, not before deleting his previous video where he pretty much admits to being an absolute menace to the internet. In his video, an open conversation, he pretty much just puts makeup on and talks about the whole entire situation extremely and i mean extremely briefly now besides how nonchalant james charles return to the internet was what really absolutely baffled me was some of the things it is he said in his video james charles basically said that whilst he was away he had noticed that a lot of the people who had come out about james charles weren't telling the truth he admitted that he had participated in some of the things that were being said about him but not not all of them. I could sit here and rehash the whole entire situation to you, but honestly, I feel like you guys can pretty much guess what my thoughts are on this whole entire situation, which is basically make it clear. He did not make it clear who the people were who weren't telling the truth and who the people were who were telling the truth. And I feel as if that is an important distinction for him to make because by saying that some of them weren't telling the truth and then not mentioning who were telling the truth, he allowed it up to open interpretation of what other people may think or feel about the people who have come out against him. He basically invalidates and nullifies every other victim's story. Now this is not to say that people can't lie on James Charles, I pretty much agree there's probably some people who may have lied about James Charles, however I feel like it is so important to make that distinction and he did not. Anyway, for the rest of the video, about halfway through the video, he carries on doing his makeup and talking about other random things that honestly I could not give two single <laughs> shits about. And since that moment, he has been back and he has released three other videos going back to normal, regular, scheduled content as per usual. And honestly, I am not okay with this. And the reason that I'm not okay with this is because of one singular other human being, EDP. 
Now, if you don't know about the EDP44 situation, EDP was on a YouTube show called Predator Poachers, where they basically kind of cornered him on a street with evidence of him attempting to speak and to meet up with a 13 slash 14 year old girl and asked him about the graphic inappropriate conversations it was that he was having with this decoy minor. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Paige, what the hell does this have to do with James Charles and the allegations that have been put up against him? Well, basically, predator poachers came along because people couldn't validify the allegations that had come out about EDP. And every single time a new person would come forward with new allegations, EDP would say that it was a lie and get away with it scot-free. However, when predator poachers finally caught up with him, he admitted to having inappropriate conversations with an alleged minor. And due to that whole entire scandal, EDP ended up losing his 2.3 million subscribers on his channel when his channel was taken down by YouTube. Now let's also put into perspective that no criminal convictions have actually taken place against EDP. He's still running the streets, probably looking for another kid or a cupcake. As far as I'm concerned, in this entire situation, James Charles and EDP are one of the same person. EDP was alleged to have said inappropriate things to minors. James Charles was alleged to have said inappropriate things to minors. EDP admitted to having bad conversations with minors. James Charles admitted to having bad conversations with minors. Neither of them have criminal convictions against them or are under any kind of criminal investigation. Ipso facto, the same goes for James Charles. So please tell me why YouTube have taken the initiative to remove EDP from their platform, but have not done anything at all about James Charles. Because clearly they don't need a criminal conviction to do so. And clearly an admission of the activity is all they need to go on. So what the hell is happening here on this platform? And why is it one rule for one person and a completely different rule for another? Oh, I know why. Because James Charles makes them a lot of mother money. I am absolutely disgusted with the way that YouTube have handled this situation. And honestly, this EDP situation lets me know that YouTube will make a stand when it comes to the moral integrity of the platform, but not. Not if it affects their advertisers, and not if it affects YouTube's golden boy and I'm sick of it. So y'all wanted to know what my thoughts were on that situation? Here are my thoughts. YouTube is trash. Anyway, that's about it from me. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Sorry to leave it on like such a sour note, but I just needed to tell you guys exactly how it is that I feel. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of The Full Cup. If you like this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. If you don't, I don't give a shit anyway. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit that notification with the bell so that you guys get a notification every single time that Petty Page posts new content. Also, I am back on Twitch streaming two days a week. I'll be streaming tomorrow evening so definitely go and follow me there and check that out also as well dramaticboutique.com that's all i have to say dramaticboutique.com go ahead and shop my makeup collection and i really appreciate all of your continued support with me on this business venture and with that being said i hope you guys have an amazing day or evening whatever the f it is that you are doing you bad ass amazing bitches it's been Paige. bye these bitches is petty